My name is Bert Koth. Um, I'm representing a global natural resources focused private equity firm um, called Denham Capital. I think copper is at a relatively good spot. Um, gold may well be at a relatively good spot, um, seemingly because of hedge against macroeconomic weakness. Um, thermal coal, I think the long term outlook is going to be very bad. Um, I do think that uh, the low gas prices will have global displacement effects on thermal coal markets. I think there's a real risk that a shale gas boom in China or in Eastern Europe, if it takes off, is going to subdue global thermal coal markets further. Um, still making materials complex, um, iron ore, uh, metallurgical coal is also going to be slight in a, in a, in a period of significant weakness. Um, but you know, having said all of this, having said all of this, good quality assets with real potential for scale and uh, which are very low on the cost curve and have a reasonably low capital intensity, such projects will always be valuable, no matter what the commodity market outlook is. There's two things that would come in, uh, into my mind immediately that would concern me about Australia. Um, one is Australia actually has the tendency for very high OPEX and CAPEX inflation. So usually the OPEX inflation uh, drives up much higher and faster in Australia than in other jurisdictions. So for example, the, the hard cooking coal cost curve over the last three and a half years in Australia, uh, only on an Australian dollar basis, shifted by more than $50 per ton upwards. Now, that's very significant. If you adjusted for a foreign exchange uh, into, into US dollar, you probably look towards a cost curve increase of $70 per ton, for example, for hard cooking coal. Um, so that would be my first concern is actually that is Australia actually becoming a structurally high cost operating environment for the mining industry. Um, the other concern is um, about uh, permitting challenges and, 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 and periods how it takes to get the permits, right? Now, nobody asks, nobody, nobody argues for not doing the right thing, right? I mean, it's, it's very critical. The mining industry has to be environmentally and community-wise very sensitive. Uh, this is your license to operate, to be environmentally compatible and socially compatible. Um, but there, Australia does have the reputation for sometimes very lengthy and cumbersome permitting processes and that obviously also constitutes investment risk. And we have to take a step back and you have to ask yourself why, does merge, why do mergers and acquisitions happen in the first place? Or maybe why should they happen and maybe why they should not happen in the first place? Um, well, the first one is simply for companies joining forces to save themselves in a cash-constrained environment. So, so you'll see you'll see a lot of more a lot of more of those activities um, over, over, over the next few years. The companies that are just going to go together out of necessity. Then you've got a universe of trade buyers uh, that are cashed up that can afford to go bargain hunting out there. Uh, you'll see a lot of that going to happen. Um, I think what is less going to happen is these multi-billion-dollar deals uh, where one company acquires the other just to kind of add another high-priced assets and. Uh, that's cost billions and billions of dollars of consideration. I think most of those deals are going to go away. Um, so it's really about adding, adding new projects to your pipeline at a reasonably attractive valuation in the longer term. Uh, that's the M&A rationale number one. Um, be then uh, simply bargain hunting opportunistically when a company is very lowly valued um, and see uh, mergers and acquisitions out of economic necessity. Uh, simply because a company alone might become too cash constrained. So I think it's these three types of M&A that you're going to see in the market. Less mega deals, but more small and mid-cap M&A deals.